Almost exactly 150 years ago, a lonely monk named Gregor Mendel, working with peas, stumbled on probably the most important biological discovery of the 20th century. The idea that all biological instructions, the instructions that create our hands, our bodies, and also our minds, are carried in a kind of unit form and passed intact from one generation to the next. My book, The Gene, is the story of that idea. It is a story of ourselves. It's a story of the code of code that maintains and builds and repairs humans. And it's a story about the future of a time when we be can begin to intersect and change that code and thereby change our future. It sounds like a panoramic project, and it is, but it's also a very personal story. It's an intimate history. Three generations of my own family are blighted by a form of genetic mental illness. Two of my father's brothers died, one with bipolar disease, one with schizophrenia. One cousin remains institutionalized in Calcutta. His mind demolished, his future destroyed by that same genetic blight. About three years ago, we began to find the actual genes that, changes, that changed the minds of schizophrenics, raising not just moral conundrums for human beings, but very deeply personal conundrums for me. Heredity is not an abstraction for me. Would I test myself for these propensities? Would I test my daughters? What would happen if only one of them carried that mark? What would our future look like if, based on the genome, we began to diagnose children in utero before they had any illness? What would happen when we started treating those people in utero or soon after they were born before they had any illness? While this story about genes and heredity was cutting through my consciousness like a red line, my own scientific work was also converging on this idea of genes. As many of you know, I'm a, I'm a cancer biologist. And to study cancer is to also study its opposite. Before a cancer cell becomes corrupted by malignant genes, there is a code of normalcy. So what does a normal genome do? How does it function? How does it ensure the astonishing diversity that each of us has as individual humans, and yet the astonishing commonality that we have as humans? And here, too, the story of heredity begins to intersect with questions about normalcy and identity. And then there's a third strand that came together for this book, and that is a strand from science. In the last two years, many of you might know this, in the last two years, we have begun to invent technologies that allow us to prospectively, intentionally, and deliberately change the genomes of humans. And what does this mean? This means if you, if you imagine the human genome as an encyclopedia, all 21,000 odd genes, that encyclopedia is, of course, written in DNA in just four letters, A, C, T, G, G, C, T, T, A, and it specifies all of our attributes. This technology allows us to enter one such encyclopedia. In fact, if it was actually published as an encyclopedia, it would be 66 times the size of the Britannica. This technology allows you to enter the encyclopedia, identify one word, erase it, change it, leaving the rest of the genome or the encyclopedia completely intact. That, in turn, means that you could go into an embryo and you could change or correct just the cystic fibrosis gene or just the Huntington's disease gene or perhaps just the, disease, uh, just the gene that caused a disease like schizophrenia or bipolar disease. Or, in some fantasy, you could change genes that, say, affect height or IQ. It doesn't take a scientist to realize that this technology is transformative, not just for science, but for the future of human beings. And so that's the third strand in gene. What does the future look like 
when we begin to unleash this technology? Who will police it? Who will become its guardian? What will be the limits of this technology? The book starts in Mendel's garden and then moves forward into the macabre excesses of Nazi eugenics and then moves forward again into 20th century biology. The gene transforms biology, it transforms medicine, but ultimately it begins to intersect with extremely pertinent social and political questions. What is race? What is identity? What is normalcy? How do we define ourselves? What is gender? What is sexuality? How do we change? What if we could change one of these fundamental attributes of humans based on these technologies that can change or select genomes? Ultimately, the gene is the story of a scientific idea coming to life, but that idea intervening and changing a social, cultural, and political landscape. It is, as I described in the book, the birth and growth of one of the most beautiful, powerful, and most dangerous ideas that human beings have ever had. Thank you.